Welcome back to The Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. It's time for us to take you through the pages of a national daily. As always, we'll pay attention to the banner caption. I mean, we're talking about the top stories. We do have a guest joining the conversation this morning, Chris Kende Mwandu. It's good to have you join us. Happy Women's Day, my sister, and all <laughs> to all the women uh, joining us this morning. Thank we you. are looking very, very messy. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. And we'd also wish you, Chris Kelly, a wonderful happy Women's Day as well. We're all celebrating. Oh, well. Oh, I have, I, I have daughters, I have a wife, I have sisters. So same to me as well. Same to you, Kofi. Thank You're you. You're also looking good this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So let's get, you too. Let's get straight to it now. We'll be looking at the Guardian newspaper and uh, the caption here, quite interesting. APC crisis, why Buhari approved Boni's sack. Uh, that's what you find. Parties neck to ratifies the CECPC's chair removal next week. Bellumium as group decries dismissal. Ex -P PGF and DG explains his misdeed. We're talking about um, uh, the particular group, but all of this around as you find this morning. Excitement as Benin Republic grants Igboho conditional release. 26 killed, many injured as head of SAC Taraba community. Uh, you also find body of missing 22-year-old BRT girl found on the Qatar Bridge. And federal government gives committee three months to renegotiate with ASU. It's time to break the glass ceiling. Interesting. Women seek end to discrimination, demand gender equality in leadership and employment. These are the headlines on the Guardian newspaper this morning. Let's uh, move straight to uh, the Punch newspaper with these headlines. Governors dump Buni back bellow as confusion reigns in the All Progressives Congress, APC, I think. That's not a bad way to put it. Confusion is indeed reigning. Uh, with the following writers, I don't know Buni's position. I have Buhari's blessing, says Niger governor. Buni remains chairman, governors behind him on treatment abroad aid. No change of leadership in APC declares caretaker panel secretary. More from the punch. FIRS, others, revenue collection cost rises by 49%, hits 329 billion naira. NNPC moves to acquire federal government's power plants, meets BPE, customs bow to pressure, suspend evaluation of imported vehicles. Interesting one there. National Assembly may suspend Electoral Act Amendment sought by Buhari. More from the punch. Buhari approves houses for 1994 Super Eagles players. Suspected herdsmen on reprisal kill over 26 in Taraba attacks already. Sad one there. Drug ring. Carry others. Remanded. Co-accused. Plead guilty. Details on page 7 of the punch. Igboho can't leave Bene Republic despite release. Lawyer. Missing ladies corpse recovered. BRT driver arrested. Lawyers tackle Ligas. Alhaji Alhaji lied. Fale resigned. Two million naira UK transfer false, according to the spokesman. And the final story is from the punch. I, my brother's widow, offered 120 million naira for settlement slain OAU student's sibling. Confucian as assailants kill, burn another Ogun monarch. And Oshun PDP Ogubi attacks Ayu, Adeleke quits, elders endorse Baba Yemi. These are stories coming on the front page of the Punch News Report. One wonders what's going on in Ogun State with another monarch being killed. Really sad mm. times there. Well, the issue of insecurity it doesn't really respect anyone. It got across. Absolutely. Everyone is Absolutely. actually Absolutely. feeling it. Uh, away from the Punch this morning, let's look, take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper. And at the bold headline says, APC crisis, Buni's fate hangs as Bello takes charge. Very interesting. And I have Buhari's blessing to act. Niger governors quoted on that. How governors plot coup. 
NEC decides on Yobe governor on Tuesday in presidency in Bunimum. These are riders underneath the board caption. Uh, we're talking about the crisis brewing in the APC. Sunday, Bohu freed, barred from leaving Bena Republic. There's a special edition of the International Women's uh, Day 2022. Uh, you also find that on the Daily Trust newspaper. And just before we move away, cocaine dealings. Don't send me to prison. Abba Kiari begs and pleads not guilty. Court stops Buhari others from tampering with new electoral act. Five died while digging sand to build groom's house. And oil firms, oil federation, 1.3 trillion naira, 2022 revenue. I think that if you look at, um, you know, the debt that uh, you have organizations, individuals, and what have you, corporate bodies or in Nigeria, it's a lot. It's time that the government puts your act together and begin to mop out, you know, take out all of those resources because we're at a time where we're lacking. Mm. Interesting. Uh, um, let's move on to the nation newspaper. Confusion in APC over caretaker bus. Buni's fate is the big one there with a the rider. Niger Governor Shehu Osani Bello rather takes over. Yobe Governor rushing back from Dubai. I don't know if this is a coup d'etat, you know, in the manner and way Kwame Nkrumah was, um, <laughs> was, was deposed in Ghana. The man traveled abroad and uh, there's been something different. Uh, he, should, he should treat himself. Let's see what happens uh, when Chris Kedewandu speaks. Freed Igboho to remain in Kotonu. Nati, 51 oil, gas firms, or federal government, 1.32 trillion naira, ICPC, EFCC, NFIU, go after defaulters, agency seeks details of subsidy beneficiaries. More from the nation. Family of slain lady on Lagos bus, BRT demands justice, crisis ridden Osho PDP primary, uh, PDP holds primary, and we fled Ukraine, dodging Russian bullets and bombs. The sub stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper. At this point, we bring in Chris Kane and Wando. Uh, um, Mr. Chris Wando, before you give us your thoughts on some of the, page, the, the stories or the headlines, um, I, I'm concerned about the fact that um, the APC crisis is taking more space on the front page than um, the young woman who was killed um, in Lagos. Is that, is that something to be worried about as far as you're concerned? Also, don't forget that um, when editors um, cast their headlines, they have uh, their reasons. And um, you will realize that uh, a, a story concerning a national party, a ruling party uh, like APC, want to play more dominance than any other story. Yes, the issue of Bamise is a woman, uh, woman angle story, uh, which has been trending for days. But you can still realize that they still have a, a, a space for it on the front page. But uh, for most uh, editors, the issue of the political party, the APC, and the trouble in the APC, which is the ruling party in Nigeria, um, definitely will take a prominence because Anything that affects APC affects everyone. It affects you and I, it affects everybody. You don't need to be a member of uh, APC for you to be affected because APC is the ruling party. And uh, it's so obvious that um, just like Chima Chebe said in his book, things fall apart. Um, this seems to have fallen apart in APC and the center can no longer hold. So I'm not surprised. But um, good enough, uh, we still have um, a prominence given to the issue of um, uh, the young lady, Bamije, who was. Uh, killed uh, uh, gruesomely by some idiots, uh, I would call. Uh, don't, I, I don't even mind using that word, some idiots. Um, and you can see all the kind of uh, excuses being given here and there, especially by the bus driver on what happened. I'm sure we're going to get to that story. Yes, but, um, but you can, you can, uh, let, let's yes, assume straight on you know, that your thoughts, because um, yesterday the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Saolo, spoke saying um, the BRT buses are safe. He also said that um, uh, Lagos State government will guarantee the security of everyone, but also said that uh, the Lagos State government will not leave any stone unturned in getting to the bottom of this. Of course, the driver has been apprehended by the police. Um, what are your thoughts on what's been happening so far regarding this story? Unfortunately, today is a, a International Women's Day, and uh, we are talking about ladies. Women have become endangered species wherever they find themselves. 
And um, you can see that um, uh, women, um, pardon my use of language, uh, are regarded as weaker uh, sex. Um, and for that reason, a lot of atrocities um, is perpetrated um, against them. Even as a child, as they are growing up, you've seen instances where children of about five years, three years, um, uh, are raped and uh, the power by the idiots. You've seen situations where um, they also grow up. Some of them don't even have access to education. You have seen what happened in the National Assembly where five bills that are supposed to enhance the life of our women they are thrown uh, overboard and under the bus by some selfish um, um, legislators and the rest of them. So, and the what is more worrisome to me is that um, Kofi, it started with Keke. Uh, it started, no, sorry, it started with Okada. At the point, Okada was not safe. They moved to Keke. Keke didn't get safe again. From there, they moved to most of this uh, um, uh, uh, transport, um, taxes and whatever, the boat, Opa, and the rest of them. Now they've moved to BRT. What am I saying, in essence, is that there have been constant, there have been instances where most of these transport units have been used to perpetrate evil. Either they kidnap the people or they mend them or they kill them and the rest of them. For, but for a boss like BRT, not to be safe. Now, what happened to the camera? There are so many questions that need to be asked. If you look at that, the interview that was conducted by TVC with that um, driver and see if you don't need to be a lawyer, you don't even need to be a judge, you don't need to be a policeman to know that this guy is lying. See all the kind of rubbish was talking about. Um, oh, uh, the blood gone. Uh, and the point that my, my mind was it, they asked me to open the door. I opened up. He heard, she heard the railing of the bus. Uh, they didn't know when they dragged her. Yeah, and then um, I zoom, I zoom, look at that. If, if, even as a student of law, you don't even, I don't know who's going to represent that kind of a human being. Because there are so many holes in what he has said. But at the end of it, or let me even run it up with. Okay, let us even assume that they took the lady away. When you went to park the vehicle, why didn't you report to the authorities? Why did you go to? Why, why did you run away? So, but the issue for me here is that Lagos State Government needs to do more to assure Lagosians that the BRT buses which they put down the road are safe for Nigerians. Because the way it is now, a lot of people will be so afraid to be able to take those buses, especially when it's not fit to capacity because it's over. And I believe, my personal opinion, that this is not the first time this young man is doing this. He has been doing it and getting away with it. It's just unfortunate that his corpus school and this girl, by, by whatever instance, was able to pass on messages before she was killed. Or else we wouldn't have had anything about this. All right, uh, let's take a look at the Daily Trust newspaper this morning. Uh, just beneath it, you have court stops Buhari, others from tampering with the new electoral act. I'm sure that you have been following the story and developing story as regards the fact that the, the president is uh, concerned about uh, disenfranchisement of political appointees. Yes, um, that's all I ought to be to proceed. Although there is no limit to the power of the legislature to um, either amend whatever law that has been passed and signed. But if you look at the the, the basis by which um, the PDP went to court and valid too, I believe, is that. Once the law has been passed and has been signed by the president, the only other place where you can seek redress on the, that law is the court. Is the court that will decide whether that um, uh, that law that was signed into or some session of that law uh, run contrary to some sessions of Nigerian by that the 1999 Constitution, Nigerian Constitution as amended, or any other act of uh, Parliament. Um, so uh, the court has. Um, in his wisdom, as that every other thing should be put on hold on signing that amendment as been sought after by the president um, until the termination of that case. And the National Assembly cannot do anything about that until that is not an interference. Some say it's an interference in the activities of the National. It's not an interference. It is behold within the court, the powers of the court to be able to do that, to be able to interpret that law. The National Assembly have done their own part and have the passage to the president and the president has done his own part by signing it. If they are supposed to be, don't, don't forget this has become a recurring uh, decimal. And I think it's time we put this to test. After the PID was signed, the president also sent it back to the National Assembly to amend some session of that 
PIB or PIA as we call it. Um, I think it is high time we start, uh, we stop this. Um, let the court now decide. If there's any session of the law signed by the president, I don't feel anybody, even in that individual, does have to be PDP. You as a person, Mercy, can go to court and challenge that session. And it's only the court that will determine. He can even go from the high court to the court of appeal to the Supreme Court. So let's see how this pans out and see what the court will make of, of it. But uh, as we say in this palace, we are sitting on a long day. All right, interesting. Uh, uh, back to the punches about Chris K and they wonder, um, the uh, the Lagos ports have been have been really on a, on a standstill or lockdown uh, because of um, uh, a strike, an indefinite strike by Clearing Agents Association uh, over what they described as frustrations occasioned by the implementation of the evaluation system or the vehicle identification number valuation by the Nigerian Customs Service. This has crippled activities as the nation's ports, um, you know, threatening to increase or even increasing actually the cost of, of importation of vehicles um, and of what, uh, you know, the vessels would have to pay while waiting to be brought uh, offloaded rather and uh, now we're seeing in the punch that the uh, Nigerian Customs Service has bowed to pressure by accession the federal government has bowed to pressure to suspend the evaluation of imported vehicles for uh, a 31 day period what are your thoughts on this for me there are three levels of when you come up, talk of corruption in Nigeria it's my personal opinion when you take out the police which we have naturally um, tagged as being corrupt the next one for me is the NMPC. The third one is the custom. And that has been the norm for some time. For me, personally, that is me. And a lot of things have, the day we open the satellite on the custom, a lot of things is going to happen. But uh, whether the custom has the right to do what they, they are doing or not, if we, you need to go to the port and see the level of corruption going on, going on at that port. A lot of things going on. There have been instances where you say 100% inspection but you come to realize that if you see the money most of these importers pay the various level of payments you will be shocked by what goes on at the port and that is the situation so if the importers uh and agents are carrying out against um, the position of some of those ones by custom they must have a, a genuine reason if what i need to ask is they come from due diligence in consultation because before you post anything you must have done your due diligence, you have to also be able to consult with uh, the stakeholders. Then a, a mutual agreement uh, has to agree. But look at it from the point also is that the custom is under serious pressure too, to be able to deliver. Don't forget that um, it's, it's not the Nigerian custom has a target that is being set for it by the, uh, by the federal government on a yearly basis, either through the uh, Ministry of Finance, or even FIRS or the, the likes. But I think what we should be doing now is how to be able to congest the port. You need to see how congested our port is. And part of the problem I also feel is that we are concentrating so much on the Lagos port. We have Calabar port, we are supposed to have a port in Wari or somewhere in a uh, Delta state. How, why are we not using that? There's supposed to also be a port in Calabar. Why is it that we are concentrating all our effort in Lagos? And that is where the infrastructure, most of the shipping companies have been complaining that as well, some of these ships come into Nigeria and they will not be able to offload what they brought in for over 30 days, at time going to two months. And for every single day they remain on sea in Nigeria, uh, within Nigerian waters, they pay certain. That doesn't happen in, across the globe. So I think we should be looking at ways of decongesting the ports rather than just making this much more difficult, both for the importers and also the operators within the, the, the Nigerian ports. As I, as I mentioned once again, let us stop this concentration of everything in Lagos. Let us bring some of this uh, uh, stuff to Calabar, to um, Wari, and even we, are, we also even agreed on them uh, on some dry spots. You can remember that some of the states have been des designated for that. So, but the level of corruption going on in, in the port uh, is, is COVID is not something to even talk about. It, it will take us a whole lot, a whole day to discuss that as it were. So uh, usually, I mean, uh, looking at some of the thoughts that you've put out as regards all of this, the fact that you have 
uh, the concentration of almost everything in Lagos State, you begin to wonder if you have governors across the 36 states and what the lawmakers are doing. If we say this is politics, then we expect that lawmakers from different constituency and different states will be lobbying and ensuring that, you know, all of this works. But unfortunately, that's not what's happening. But let's move away, uh, you know, from that and look at the issue of renegotiation. Now, the federal government is saying, Oh, it's giving a committee three months to renegotiate with ASU. We're talking about agreement from 2009, and from my counting, if I'm not mistaken, we're looking at 13 years or there about like a decade, if I'm not mistaken. How do you go back to renegotiate? And I mean, what happens to an agreement? First of all, you had an agreement. It took 2009, let's just say we move from 2010, 11, 12, 13, you move on with the numbers, and now we're in 2022. And we're talking about this. Chris, what do you make of this? Is there hope for the educational sector and the Nigerian student? Before I go to that, let me quickly touch on what you just uh, discussed. Let it be known that the port is within the exclusive list of the constitution. There is nothing any state, the state can do about it. But you, but, but, sir, you can't take out the fact that, you know, we're talking about politics here and it doesn't necessarily mean that lobby because that's what happens. They lobby for this thing, right. even if it's within the exclusive list. We're not taking that, we're not ruling that fact out. But we're saying that, you know, we understand the politics that happens and this person should also play to the gallery. That is what I'm saying. The first and foremost is you have to think out with the constitution. Those are the areas where I think the National Assembly should have talked of. Those are the areas I was taking their country uh, look at and making sure that most of these things are decentralized. The basic laws that I was taking, look at the issue of um, state police. They didn't talk about that. Look at the issue of um, of the port we are talking about. They didn't talk about that. On TV, and the same thing with most of the minerals in the state, where the federal government has total control over resources in the states. So on to be able to make sure that the state also... Do you know how much cross river state would have been making from Calabar ports if that place is put into place? Do you know how much Delta state would be making from um, uh, uh, from um, uh, from that port in Wari or wherever it is if that place is put in place? That is what I'm saying. So a situation where we continue to make sure that some people are benefiting for this. So and that is where I think that something needs to be to give. So we don't need to concentrate on Lagos. Let us... The, that, there was a, even in, uh, in Onisha, Onisha have a port. All we need to do is to dredge that Onisha port and make it viable. So most of these things that you see coming, most of the, even the uh, containers coming to the are not made for Lagos. Most of them are made for Aba. Some are made for Onisha. Some are made for Kala. Some are even made for Kaduna. And just, you put them there, and we're talking about now, what we're talking about is now putting out a rail at the port so that they can move some of these things to the that is not good enough. When you can drop something in Calabar or in Wari, and you get to other part of it. But back to your question on ASU, and I'll continue to ask, are we still talking about ASU? Well, um, we've talked on this program several times on the issue of ASU and the problem associated with ASU. And we have always identified the problem is that the problem is that the federal government does not um, uh, adhere to the status of the agreement or contract they sign with ASU and other labor organizations. And you continue to ask yourself, why do we Government is a continuum. I had the uh, minister saying, oh, the agreement, the initial agreement was not signed by the government of Buhari, or we are having issues, we are taking money from here. Whether it's the government of Buhari or not government, government is a continuum. If you, you don't come, you don't take off a, you don't take off, um, a company, and you look at the, you leave, you leave the, the abilities. You take everything. So that is what happened. And they said they want to renegotiate. As we say, we are not renegotiating. We've negotiated this for a very long time. The fact is that the federal government should be able to meet as soon demand to a larger state so that the schools have reason. And it's not the school, you know, they asked for one month from what I had. And um, as soon as he's saying that uh, uh, this issue of resumption won't take place until the middle of April or what, I don't know how true that is. But when two elephants fight, the students that suffer. The government have, for the best and the interest of the students, look at what is happening in Ukraine. If our, we have a university system that is working perfectly, most of those students that you see finding that, that find themselves trapped in Ukraine now, trapped in Sumi, and most of those uh, parts of Ukraine would have been Nigerian universities and have been schooling. But what happened now? Most of them cannot make it back to, to Nigeria from Ukraine. It's so bad. Um, so I, I still believe that um, the federal government should be able to meet with ASU and make sure that all the agreements uh, agree with ASU. And not only ASU, there's also with ASU and some other labor unions, which the federal government signed. 
um, agreement with them, and they refuse to fulfill most of those agreements. All right, interesting one. Uh, Chris Kelly Wando, let's, let's look at another story coming from the punch. Um, I love football. I don't know if you love football. Um, but um, 22 I'm a man years... Man. <laughs> Um, I, I, I don't feel sorry for you, but as an Arsenal fan, all I, I can know say... You're I know you are Chelsea. I know, I'm an Arsenal fan. I'm an Arsenal fan. Look at ah, me. Ah, okay. Look at you me. are the poor position me. now. Don't yeah. worry. All, 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 all I can say as an Arsenal fan is take heart, because I know what you're going through, okay? It's not your point. Don't worry. We'll cut up with you soon. I know what you're going through. <laughs> but anyway, um, another story of interest to me on the front page of the Portuguese Super is uh, Buhari approves houses for Super Eagles members. This is coming uh, after 22 years of winning the African Nations Cup in 1994. Um, the federal government approving an allocation of 22 houses to the members of the 94 Eagles uh, in their various states, uh, thereby fulfilling a pledge made to, made to them actually 28 years ago, 94, yeah, 28 years ago. Um, but I do remember, I think it was in 2021, in June 2021, the president also made the same promise uh, to the 1994 Eagles. So I'm kind of confused as to whether it's just the formal allocation uh, in fulfillment of that promise. But um, Buhari wasn't the one who made the promise in 94, but he has come and I think it's been fulfilled. Your thoughts on this? Um, I, I sincerely have to um, give it to the Buhari government. They've done a lot to redeem most of this. Uh, uh, these promises. Um, uh, Kofi, the 1994 team is what I call, we call the dream team. That is the best team Nigeria ever had. You saw what they did. Apart from winning uh, AFCON, they also went to the World Cup and did very well. It is also within that period that uh, we had the Atlanta team within 1996. They also went to Atlanta and won the first good medal for Nigeria. For me, uh, the, and let me let, let put it on note. It is not just about Buhari, it's about one particular person. And that person is the, uh, the Minister of Housing, uh, Babatunde Raji Pashala, who I think is a, I think is a, I think is a man you fan too. Uh, he's not a uh, person. Uh, let, let, let's not go there. Man. Let's not go there. <laughs> <laughs> so, and um, he has done a lot um, in making sure that most of the promises made by this government, and the, that is part of what we are saying, God, government is a continuum. Most of these people were promised. He, Kofi, do you also realize that um, the, 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 the Golden Eagle team that won the first under 17, or is it under 16, it's under 17 World Cup in 1986 in Russia? Mm. And we made promises to them, and we didn't fulfill them. It's just to uh, this government also to be able to. So I totally commend this government for what they are doing and making sure that some of these players have died. Some of them have died, uh, as you are aware. But I think that their family will benefit from this. Just few, um, I think last, I think last year, a quick one. Just last year, even the Lagos State government was able to give a house to someone like a Choma Ajunwa, who won a gold medal at the at the first meet to win a gold medal for Nigeria at the Atlanta Olympic um, um, Atlanta Olympic. So it's a good one for me, and I think. Yes, yes, indeed. Um, another example, I think Joe Bonfrey, he came all the way down from the Netherlands to collect his house. Even Westerhoff, I think Westerhoff too. Yes, because yes. Because he's at one point. Yes, indeed. And, and uh, it, it, it's just, you know, you talked about the uh, uh, the Golden Eagles, um, the under 16 team, the one that won the first World Cup. I think it says a lot yeah, about how we, treat, how we treat our, our heroes. Uh, one that, that yeah. leaves a bitter taste in my mouth uh, till today is the way Rashidi Akini died. Is the way Rashidi Akili died, and how um, the entire well, country and government, both in the state and the federally, treated that case. Not only Rashidi Akili, even that of Mudalawa, you need to go through and see what happened. And they're not, this was not even limited to Olympic players. There are some also veteran journalists that did so well in promoting uh, in this. Fabio uh, who just died uh, two days ago at the age of eight. He is somebody that really brought so much passion to the to the um, uh, football broadcast, and he saw the way he died. There have been so many others like that. I think we should continue to honor our heroes, and it's not just just in the sports, even in broadcast. Kofi, by the time you get old, you've done so much for Nigeria by what you are doing. You'll be able to. Messi has done so much for Nigeria by what she's doing because by what you are doing, we are elevating the top. We are elevating Nigeria. We are. We are making progressive um, analysis on how Nigeria. Tomorrow, I don't see why someone like Messi, we say she's smiling. 
Why she can be honored for doing a wonderful... It's not for Plus TV. It's not Plus TV or any television. What she's doing, she's being patriotic. You can see the way, the passion with which she discussed Nigeria and, and that is what we are talking about. So, but our colleagues in the media, I've always said that the media is only media where you don't have a, 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 a pension, sort of. Chris K, the Wendu, we have to let you go at this point in time. Thank you so much for being part of The Breakfast. And we look forward to having more of you on the show. I mean, it's always a delight to listen to you. Thank you so much and happy International Women's Day. Happy International Women's Day. And my, my brother, Kofi, we'll meet at the top. Don't worry. <laughs> you can, you can, know, can, Touch us if you can. I, I'm, <laughs> just, you I, can. I'm just wondering why everybody's talking about it and feel to yeah. understand that, you know, Liverpool is second on that table. Well, and well, just well, before well, Chelsea we'll and, you, uh, we'll leave you. And, and Chelsea. We are and, not part of your WhatsApp Arsenal. group. <laughs> we are not competing with you, you know. We take anyway. a break now and let's tell you what happened today in history. When we return, we're heading straight to the major uh, conversation of the day, of course. The focus will be on uh, the Women International Day. Please stay with us.